motherfucker back again. What's up, Human Rights Nation? Welcome back. Jason. So, the first thing we're going to talk about is our WrestleMania predictions. What do you think? This next Sunday or this Sunday? You don't even know what day I don't even care anymore. <laughs> it's Probably a, next Sunday. It's freaking April 3rd. Next Sunday, then. It's the biggest show of the year, and you don't even know what day it is. Like... Well, you should um, totally hand in your wrestling fan membership card. Well, back. fuck you, because like last year's Mania was good, but the other Manias before then were just utter crap. So that's why I don't care anymore. Is it the fact that like, uh, are we just talking WWE or can we talk TNA? Yeah, well, right now we're just talking about wrestling, and then we'll talk about other stuff after. Is it the fact that when you have like guys like Eric Young as a world champion in organizations, that kind of kills your? Your mojo, mojo for the wrestling business, so to speak. Eric Young, he's a talented guy, but I can never take him seriously as that Joker type stuff that he was Considering doing. he has held like every title in TNA, he's like a Grand Slam champion, I think. World champion, tag team champion, X division. He's X division. Remember him when him and oh yeah, he's X division, King of the Mountain slash Legends title slash TV. Yeah, he is that. That's just, He's yeah. their version of Bret Hart, I guess? No, don't even compare him to Bret Hart. Fuck that shit. <laughs> don't ever compare Eric Young to Bret Hart. Oh my I God. saw the anger in your voice there, man. Yeah. So anyways, the WrestleMania matches, the pre-show. We got the Andre the Giant Memorial Look at this Royal. guy. He recorded a YouTube video looking on his phone. <laughs> I'm watching, looking at Wikipedia, the matches. Yeah, but like I said, you should know this stuff, man. Well, have you not seen No DQ and how they do their stuff? Like they, I haven't watched No DQ in a while. It's this how that shit is done. I didn't even know they still made the, the No DQ video. That site has gone. Even you said yourself, it's gone to shit in handbasket in recent years. It's a okay, it's a it's shell of its former self. They don't even say who's in this shit. But who cares? Social outcasts are in it. Kane, oh, Big Show. Okay. Are they going to say anything on who's in this crap? Announced participants. Heath Slater so far. Curtis Axel. Adam Rose. Bo Dallas. Big Show. Kane. Tyler Breeze. Let's talk about Zack Ryder. No, we'll get to that. We'll get to that. For the pre-show matches. Yeah. So far, these guys have been announced. So more. Who who do you think is going to win? Does it really even matter who gets to win this shit? Considering that it's such a prestigious award. Yeah. The Andre the Giant Memorial. And you do nothing with it. Like, Andre the Giant, and I even said in my review, I did my first one from YouTube about Big Show, uh, that he, Andre is the greatest giant in the history of wrestling, and this is the, the award that they have to honor him. Is an Andre the Giant match, should that be a, a featured match? Yeah, it should on be the a card? featured match. Because it was on the one, the first time they did it, it was on the card, but then they put on pre-show. It shows how much they respect it. Like the Battle Royale. But to me, they, it's they, now, they, they respect Andre the Giant, but they don't respect the match. It, it's like it's a way to get guys on the WrestleMania card just so they can cash in on the That's WrestleMania. That's the whole point. Because that, like the Battle Royale is just to get guys on the card, like they did in WrestleMania 1, 2, 3. It's like the guys that they have no plans for for this current cast. That's the whole point, because they put the guys that they have nothing for in this match. But who do you think is going to win this match? Because, like, Big Show wanted to. Why not let Big Show win it? I heard Braun Strowman anything? is the top pick. Oh, right. I forgot that Braun Strowman. Because they want to okay, push him. I'm to picking him. I don't like the guy, but picking Braun Strowman to win this, because why not? Well, doesn't really matter. Bray Wyatt's doing nothing for Mania. Should I say He's it? injured. No, he's... Uh, like, they had a, a house show at MSG last night, and he was uh, on the card doing... But or Oh, he, okay. I thought he was injured. Working so. a, maybe working a tag match, but it, it, it just... It, Think about it. This is the guy that they want to strap on the the old proverbial rocket ship and take him to the moon, right? Like top heel. They've been trying to do that, but they haven't done that at all. Like if you've heard the post mania plans, they want to have him and Roman Reigns do a, a a program again for the title. So you figure. I hope to God they do that because Bray Wyatt deserves it. Uh, Roman Reigns, Bray Wyatt. That kind of reminds me a little bit of the Undertaker Mankind rivalry. How they would go to it, they come back. Uh, or The Rock versus Mankind. Yeah, I guess in retrospect, 
to that. But I'm just saying it's funny that they don't have any that Bray Wyatt isn't actually in one of the, the prominent matches on the WrestleMania card. That's Which is bullshit, because it wasn't he supposed to take on Brock Lesnar, but Dean Ambrose is... Well, like I said, we'll get to that match later, but yeah. Bray Wyatt, he has... Well, he had probably be in a pre-show battle royal, which is kind of sad, because he, he should have been in a main event match. I've heard Cesaro could be a last-minute entrant, but he's still kind of injured. Yeah, so. a lot of people are injured. This is a weak Luke wrestling. Luke Harper match. is going to be out for six months. if he He's hurt. injured again. Huh. Okay. Was he injured the first time? I didn't he was know. injured before. I forgot for what, but he was... Or no, that was Eric Rowan, wasn't oh. it? Kane and Big I Show... I can't remember anymore. Should, should we accept as fans that Kane and Big Show's days of prominent matches on WrestleMania are pretty much over? They've pretty it's much... been like that for quite a while. Kane and Big Show are just there to make the other guys look good. Kane is just a corporate guy now. Like, not the corporate guy, but... He's got he's the to like. <laughs> he's a smart guy. He doesn't need anything. Because, like, he... Has an over his own island, I think, or is that Val Venus? Oh, no, that's Kane. Has his own island. Somewhere. I didn't know if Kane was that, had his own island. I'm learning something new. Where'd you hear that? From around? You hear that, or mixing him up as um, a evil James Bond villain? You know who I, I could see him. in the battle royal, considering he's never officially announced his retirement, is Christian. Yeah, I could see that. He's never officially announced it. He's doing a show with Edge. Yeah, it's pretty hilarious. I, 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 I still haven't seen it, but they're always great together. Um, hell, you could even see, for nostalgia reasons, Funaki come out for one night to enter the battle royal. Yeah, or for something to do. Obviously, Speaking that's... of Funaki, why was he with Hideo Itami a while back as his English translator if they not hired him? He was I just there. No fucking clue. It's just... Even though Funaki is not... Can you think of any other things that guys have just showed up without explanation in prior WWE history? Virgil? Oh, when he came back a couple of years ago? With yeah. Ted DiBiase? He just came out for no reason? Hell, you can even th throw him in there for <laughs> shit. Is, is, he, is he still begging for money to be a millionaire? On I'm sure he would want to. Is he still doing that? I heard he was begging in New York City subways last time around or yeah, something. Yeah, he's like doing the whole like, like Kickstarter thing. Like, help me become a billionaire. Or give me money because I don't want to earn it. Mick Foley does something nice. Uh, he sponsors a... Uh, Women's rape charity and hey, hey, Mick Foley is an awesome guy though. Which women suffering from rape because apparently, well, obviously it, it's a quite the ordeal. So you have to have a charity charity for that. So he uh, sponsors people on their behalf and takes the people who give to that foundation to WrestleMania, which is nice, you know. Exactly gives back. Yeah. Uh, um, so we beat the Andre Battle Royale most today. likely because like yeah, who's your pick, Braun Strowman? I said Braun Strowman. Who are you going with? I'm going with Braun Strowman. Because, yeah, all right, the next pre-show match, which I'm surprised it was actually on, put on the main event. Not the... It was put put on the main show for a while. The Usos was the Dudley Boys. Um, just, why? It's like, when he first put that on, I was like, why are the Dudleys having a match with the Usos on a WrestleMania card? That doesn't make sense. I would have thought that would have been, like, a, the featured tag team match on this year's WrestleMania, in all honesty. That's what I thought, like, six months... I thought that the first night the Dudley Boys returned to WWE was these guys are going to be in some type of high profile match on WrestleMania, but what? They're on the fucking pre show? That just doesn't make sense. Yeah, because like, they, ever since they came back, they haven't been doing anything, and they came back with a bang, but they have done nothing. They were in a tag team match with the New Day for tag titles, but they lost those. Which, the Dudley Boys don't really need the tag team titles. They, they're in that point in their When career. do you want to see like, one last run for nostalgia? Not really, because they're at that point where they don't really need the titles because they're already established. Like Shawn Michaels, he doesn't really need to win any more titles. He's already like Chris Jericho as well. He's already established. He doesn't need to win any more titles. Until I made her continental champ, I think. Yeah, uh, but uh, yeah, the Usos versus Dudley is like. I'm gonna go with. I'm gonna say the Dudley Boys just for nostalgia, WrestleMania, and to make them hotter as heels post WrestleMania so that they could continue the feud. I'm going to go with the Usos since Dudley's have not won a single pay-per-view match since they've been back. Well, they won a pay-per-view match that was a DQ one time, but that doesn't count. <clears throat> but yeah, like, when they did... Ha it has the uh, novelty effect of the Dudley boys being back in a WWE ring kind of worn off with you? Or is it still like, oh my god, they're back? Like, Well, when they first came back, I was like that, but now it's the novelty has wore off. Like, I still you know what it reminds me of? Like, the tag team announcing those two? Remind me back in the old school WrestleManias where they had ran those tag teams, like, 
uh, Orient and Express versus The Rockers and all that stuff. Demolition versus Tenru and Kiato. Yeah. Those kind of matches. Yeah. But, but that was back in the 80s. It kind of makes sense. Tenru there. and Kyo. How do you say Kyo? Kitayo, Kitori. Were they even under contract? No, back then it was just a handshake, man. Oh, uh, so they... Everybody was a handshake. And deal. as you've told me so many times, that's when Vince was a paranoid when he would bring in guys from other companies to work the big shows. Yeah, right? wasn't it like in 95 is when he started doing contracts? When like, What was the last... WCW kept on taking all his talent? Was it 97 that was the last Rumble to have outside, or outside talent participate? Or you should know this better than me. 97? Yeah, because like we had like heavy metal... Mil Mascara's Latin uh, Lover. I highly doubt Mil Mascara's had a WWE contract. No. This was before the contract. Like I yeah. said, the, the handshake deal. And then after that, he started doing... Latin Lover? Art Bar? No, not Art Bar. Some other guy. No, but after that, he started doing contracts. Because like, like I said, WCW kept on taking his talent. Yeah, I have to be honest with you. I did not... Learn. Think the thing that nailed the coffin for Colin Nash. Like Colin Nash when they left. Because Luger kind of screwed them over, but that was forgettable because it's yeah. Luger. And but, Ravishing Rick Rude, too. Um, well, not really forgettable, but he left and was on. No, but Hall and Nash were, were guys that jumped that actually hurt Vince. Yeah. In booking-wise. And, and to save his own talent, he did the contracts because he didn't want <clears throat> Shawn Michaels and everybody else to leave. Yeah, but anyways, yeah, so you're picking Usos. I'll, I'll pick Dudley's. Uh, IC title ladder match. Wait, hold on. What's... The, Oh, are we going in order? Okay. Yeah, well, uh, oh. I'm going to save that one for last. Okay. <laughs> Shane McMahon versus The Undertaker. Hell in a Cell match. If Shane wins, that might be the show of Raw and Undertaker uh, will be barred from competing at WrestleMania. Like, oh, only he can't compete at WrestleMania. He's not retiring. He can't. If he loses. No, that it, means he's retiring. Wait. Yeah, because he only wrestles at WrestleMania. Well, he wrestled at Survivor Series that one time. Actually, he did a few. I'm confused. He, he, he did hell. He did a few of the minor shows this year. He even yeah. did. Uh, I think he worked the SmackDown too. So, but I think it's because Taker is in a little bit better of. Did, did like the WrestleMania 30 match? He he he. That was basically a one-sided fight, wasn't it? What was the WrestleMania 30 match? Brock the Street match. You should know well, that. It's, not a, it's. I don't pay attention anymore. WrestleMania 30. Yeah, it wasn't one. And then you got that black pretty... dude in the audience who's actually. Uh, Gained fame from that match. Kind of looks like a, a a little bit of a beefed up version of Steve Urkel. Yeah, he was surprised. A lot of people were surprised, but he was the most surprised at all out of all. He did a, a cameo on the Edge of Christian show, so that's why I'm kind of yeah putting his name out there. Out, but yeah, I think we're all with the feeling that Taker's gonna win that match, right? Of course, because like I don't see there's no reason for him to lose to Shane McMahon. Although Shane McMahon this entire time, like he has not shown fear at all, has he? No, he's been typical Shane McMahon. Show up like in your face like his bitch. This is what I was afraid of. Like, yeah, from moment one, like he did not show any fear. Like, yeah, Shane McMahon's gonna lose, but the entire story up to here, he's made Undertaker his bitch. I'm surprised he didn't take him out to dinner. <laughs> Remember, kids, back in the day when him and Kane had a ma had a feud, he took Kane out to dinner before their match at Unforgiven. No, I thought that was Survivor Series. Oh, Survivor Series, one of the two. I'm surprised they didn't ask Undertaker out to dinner. Still the, one of the gayest. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> it was just weird, but yeah. Shane McMahon just not showing any fear I think at Shane all. lost both of those matches. But, but yeah, he lost those matches, but he made the person look like his bitch the entire time. And didn't he get... Like, yeah. Randy, when he took on Randy Orton. Randy Orton won that match, but the feud leading up to it... Randy Orton looked like a bitch the entire time. That's what Shane McMahon does. He's even doing this to the Undertaker of all people. Surprise Taker's By well showing no goddamn fear. Like, Shawn Michaels did it great. Yeah, you know, the first night Vince announced the uh, Hell in the Cell with Taker, Shane's like, oh, okay. I was like, oh, okay, it's like a walk in the park. Where? He's like smiling. Hell, I, I even think Lesnar showed a little bit of fear. Yeah, right? of course. Like I said, when Shawn Michaels did that angle with Undertaker, like, like, uh, he's not afraid of him. He made an angle of it. Like, he's like, I'm not afraid of you. He made it, like, do something. He's just, like, just not standing there, like, smiling, not showing emotion. I still think, say Sean was the, the, the best well-done build-up to the whole, yeah. whole streak. Those two Mania matches that they did. Exactly. 
Um, but yeah, Shane McMahon's not going to win this Do game. you see some sort of a run-in, like you're talking about Dolph Ziggler doing some type of run-in, costing I heard that. Match. I don't know why Dolph Ziggler would be in that. Because he's got that whole thing going on with the authority. The, the, Still, yeah. I wasn't paying attention because it's Dolph Ziggler. As much as I like Dolph Ziggler, he hasn't been doing well. Come a long ways from being the a carry for Charlie Guerrero, hey? Curran <laughs> White. Curran White. Kids! Go look at Curran White but on YouTube. You remember what I said? His caddy is, what was his name? Nick Nemeth? Yeah, he went by his real name. Yeah. It's Nick a young Dolph Ziggler, and then he went into the Spirit Squad. And then came back as Dolph Ziggler. Hi, my name is Dolph Ziggler. Yeah. <laughs> Shaking the hand at everybody. But yeah, I say I'm Ziggler. As someone of a Hispanic cult race, that Curran White gimmick offended you a bit, didn't it? Curran White? Yeah. No, not really. I found it funny as hell. Well, you called me racist when I said I like the, the I enjoyed some of the the promos when I was because you're them. white. That's why. <laughs> There's a difference. Sorry, no offense to people, but yeah, a white guy liking the idea that Chavo Guerrero is playing a white guy that hates Latinos is kind of racist. Did he hate about Latinos it. in the gimmick. He hates minorities. Oh, okay. But yeah, as a Latino myself, I found it funny as fuck, because it's just funny. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe it's a race thing. Yeah. I don't know. Am I wrong? Ask me. I don't know. I may be wrong. Put it in the comment section below here on, on the YouTube, I guess. On the YouTube. On the YouTube, okay. On YouTube, whatever. Yeah. On the YouTube. Just yeah. So Undertaker wins that. Uh, Next, we got the one-sided fist fight, part one. One-sided fist fight? What are you talking about? I didn't talk. Oh, I was talking about that on my other... Things. The one side of this fight, Dean Ambrose oh. versus Brock Lesnar in a no holds bar street fight. Obviously, Lesnar's gonna win. And yeah, like I, Dean Ambrose, he's gonna give the fight of his life. He'll look good. He'll he'll have a good presentation coming in and out of the match. But you gotta think it is a one sided fist fight because Brock is a motherfucking beast. But Bray could interfere and cost Brock the match too. Ooh. Bray Wyatt, if you want to talk about Bray. Oh yeah, they're talking about like the possible Wyatt family going in there and doing something. Because how many of us? Want to see Bray Wyatt versus Brock Lesnar? A lot of us. That's going to be. I'm thinking SummerSlam probably for that one. So probably. Yeah. It, when it but yeah, like like I said, one sided fist fight because it's Dean Ambrose. He's going to fight for his life. He'll like fight to the death. Wouldn't it be funny? It's just, it just doesn't look right though. Terry Funk does a run in and gets F5. Well, he was showing on a segment. I sent you that clip. Yeah. yeah. You never caught. I was surprised on it. Yeah, it like chainsaw too. He brought it to that. <laughs> Hey, uh, that's like that's not PG. Any of you kids in the PG era? Any of you kids in the Attitude Era? Or, or, or any of you kids in the Attitude Era? Any? Of the, oh, what am I on? You kids who don't know about the Attitude Era? Coming up, that don't know about the Attitude Era. Terry Funk, he's still known was Chainsaw Charlie in the Attitude Era. Or Lady Stocking on his head and How took, out, took out a fucking chainsaw to the ring. Look it up, it's hilarious. Or him and Scorpio had a team for a while. That, that was kind of cool. That was a short lived tag When Scorpio though. was his protege, I guess. Yeah, um, short lived though. Um, okay, uh, yeah, that's that's gonna be. Even though they're PG company, you think we're gonna see some color? Uh, which is. I hope, because like, they've been doing a lot of unrelated PG stuff lately. They did say for WrestleMania season. I guess WrestleMania is the season now. Um, I that, guess. That uh, they're uh, gonna. Make the booking a little bit more risque, I guess. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Because I like to see at least some kind of color in. Color means blood. Like some kind of blood in that match. Because, like, yeah, come on, it's Dean Ambrose versus Brock. One of them has to fucking bleed. But if you think about it, it kind of, from a booking standpoint, it does make sense this match. Because. Yeah, it does Ambrose make sense. Like it screwed him out of the. It's fastly. Yeah. But like I said, like it's the match itself, it makes sense, but also at the same time, it's kind of one-sided. Remember when you did your first, your own predictions for the match, you, you couldn't stop laughing? And you're like, oh, Dean Ambrose versus Brock Lesnar. <laughs> That's what I was saying, like a one-sided fist fight. Oh, yeah, I saw that, yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, what do you think is going to win, Brock? I said Brock, as soon as you said the I match. go with Brock, too. That's one that I think we unanimously agree on. Ah, uh, the triple threat match for the WWE Divas Championship. Charlotte versus Sasha Banks. Becky Lynch versus Sasha Banks. This is a match I'm actually looking forward to. I'm picking Sasha. For the Divas match, because, like, yeah. What? 
Sasha, I'm picking. Who are you picking? Oh God, I don't even know. Cause like Charlotte's on a roll. Like he's, she's doing the heel thing with Ric Flair. They're cheating their way to victory. Or just to go a different way to counteract the fans. Like uh, they'll just say, oh, we'll just maybe make her retain, and then we'll do the title change at Extreme Rules or Probably. whatever pay per view. Like I said, they're doing the whole Ric Flair is always interfering. They're like doing the old Ric Flair stealing gear and all that shit, like, cheating-wise. So, I'm gonna go say, like, Charlotte retains by the skin of her teeth, because, like, Ric Flair does some shit, uh, almost gets caught, and then... So, you're it. finally on board for this whole Divas revolution? I'm not on board for it, it's just, it has been book-wise. Because remember, but, we had this conversation when Sasha came out at the Royal Rumble, she got one of the biggest ovations of the night. Yeah, like, but I'm just saying, on the main roster, the Divas revolution has been that great. On NXT, it's really amazing, but yeah, these three women can actually go. Charlotte versus Becky Lynch versus Sasha Bank. Good thing there's no Nikki Bella in that shit, because man, that would have been horrible. Remember when they were doing Team Bella versus Team... Don't remind me. I so don't want to be reminded of that shit. I know a lot of people that, from some of the feedbacks I saw online, were like, Yo, what the point is doing this team thing? It waters the performers down. Yeah, it does. Like, they weren't even doing that great anyways. Like, it, it's so hard to take a revolution seriously. When you have, uh, even though Nikki is the 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 most uh, athletically gifted out of the Bella team, I guess. Nikki? Yeah. Okay. I you don't agree with that. No, I don't really like Nikki or Brie at all. I just don't or is it because she's dating John Cena? No, I, even before she dated John Cena, I never liked the Bella Twins. It's not just because she's oh. missed John. Well, that's one of the main factors because, like, going out was the number one guy on the roster. I'm not really too high on Naomi either. I find her kind of boring, but who's Naomi? Team, uh, Team Bad with Tamina, and I think they're forgettable. I know Tamina, but who's Naomi again? Was she a fucking dactyl? Yeah. Oh, that bitch. <laughs> that bitch. That bitch. <laughs> Naomi and what's her face from the fucking dactyls? I can see you working up in WWE. <laughs> you probably would say that bitch to her face, <laughs> wouldn't you? I wouldn't say it to her face. I'm not that crazy. You're so politically incorrect when it comes to the the females. Hey, it's all good. You, you know what's sad is Natty Natalia Nightheart is probably the most talented on that whole. Diva. And yet she's on the Divas show. And she's just got a side Diva match. How fucking disrespectful is that? Like she should. She's only on. We've been saying that forever. Natalia has been like doing nothing. They don't do anything with her. Poor Natalia. Fuck. She's got that nice guy. I, I think her problem is she's I too think, nice. Yeah, she, it's like people walk all over her because she's too nice. Like, on the independent scene, she held various titles and organizations during the times that she was there. And she's only... Not that the Divas title me. Well, I guess it does. Or yeah, back in the day, it was TJ Wilson and Harry Smith. Yeah. No, not but, Tyson Kidd. TJ Wilson. Uh... She's only held the Diva title for, like, one time. It was, like, a one- or two-month reign. I can't remember. It's pretty forgettable. Remember Lay Cool? Oh, God. Not Lay Cool. The beautiful people. Rip off, yeah. Which he purposely ripped off from TNA, but TNA isn't that way to begin with. Yeah. Um, so, anyways, your picket. Did you say your picket? I, I said, said Charlotte. Charlotte. Okay, let's... Uh, I think we kind of... You pick Sasha. Yeah. Uh, okay, so the next one is not for the tanking titles. I thought it was. Okay. The 4 on 3 handicap match. The New Day versus the League of Nations. I was going to say, aren't the League of Nations an awesome stable? Sure. So, somebody. They are an amazing stable. Somebody like you being from a foreign uh, country, shouldn't you be on board with the whole League of Nations thing? Or because you got like. The, I would be if they're, they're a minority a, type faction. I would be if they had some actually good, awesome guys in it. Because Sheamus, who gives a fuck about him anymore? Bad News Barrett hasn't been doing anything. Rusev, his push has been killed off because of John Cena. They got Del Rio in there, man. And he's Del, Latino. No, he's the only good one. He, he should be like... Like, um, well, one out of three ain't bad, but still, it's not a good team. I apologize if I come off racist in this video, but being him that he's of Latino descent, isn't that technically your guy if you want to look at it that way? Yeah, but it's not. I don't know, because, like, just because you he's just Latino. You just roll your eyes at me. Just, yeah, just because he's <laughs> Latino, I'm not going to go for him. 
Like, I like the Lucha Dragons, but I'm not... Isn't that how the WWE uh, thinks? I'm lo- rooting for the Lucha Dragons. I, I like the Lucha Dragons, but I'm not rooting for Kalisto in the... I other remember night. you talking to me back in the day on Facebook when we were talking about how WWE is looking for their Latino guy. You said they're so narrow-minded in their thinking that all Latinos are going to like a guy just because they're Latino. Yeah, just because he's Latino. All us Latinos are going to like look at how Look at the failed Sin Cara experiment. Which one? The original. Yeah, Botchamania Sin Cara. Oh my god, the guy like gets thrown outside the ring and breaks his finger and he ends the match just because he broke his finger. Isn't that the guy that was technically the first signee under the Triple H era? Yeah. And they had a big fucking press conference and everything. Yeah, because he was a legend in Mexico. He was mystico. And they brought him in and he fucked up on his first night. I think they're paying him a huge sum in royalties. They were. like it was, And then they did a ladder match with him and he almost died in that shit. And it's funny how we're supposed to forget the, sin- the new Sin Cara is Hunico. I think we all know that. Some of us know him. But yeah, Unico is a new Sin Cara. Well, you can obviously and tell that he, he does a better job of being Sin Cara than the original Sin I think Sin he's Cara. more al- acclimate, more better fluent in the English speaking. Yeah. Because Sin Cara can speak now. Back when yeah. Unico had his own gimmick, did he not remind you of La, Los Bariquas? Oh yeah, him, him and Haku-san when they were doing Haku-san? It. Yeah, Unico and Kamachi. Who's a Haku? Haku, Kamachi, you know Kamachi. Kamachi, oh, you called him what? Kamachi is Haku's son. Oh, he is? You knew that? No, I didn't. No, no I didn't he knew something from what I hear. Yeah, oh yeah. Kamacho and Unico remind me of Los Bariquas. Doesn't that make you... Uh, I had some so, but yeah, uh... But yeah, World of the Real is in it, like, the only guy I like, and like, Wade Barrett's leaving, I think, after Mania. New Day's baby faces now, I, I got it. I think, I don't know, they're both healed teams, uh, but like, people are just cheering on New Day, because they like him. I'm not into this match, it's passable, but I guess I'll pick, uh, New Day. I'll pick New Day, since, like, wait, because, like, has League of Nations won any match? No. And like Barry's leaving after me, so yeah. And Rusev was like a big star a year ago. <laughs> Until John Cena got his hands on him. You make you make it sound like John Cena's like Hulk Hogan, how Hulk killed Vader's career in WCW. It is! Because John Cena is the Hulk Hogan of today, man. Rusev had such a promising career. And then he took on John Cena. God, just the tone of your voice there. <laughs> yeah. God, I was like, yeah. I want to like do a I quit match. When the fuck does John Cena do an I quit match? I don't think he's ever lost. I mean, match. when does the when does John Cena ever say I quit? Like, yeah, the moment you heard that he's doing an I quit match, you knew Rusev was fucked. Did uh, Cena kill JBL's momentum or career? If, if he even... what momentum? JBL had no momentum. He was just there. Well, the guy was champion for a year. <laughs> because Triple H didn't want to work Tuesday. <laughs> like Paul Heyman said on ECW on Night Stand. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, so... Yeah, that, no, that's the only reason. If Triple H did work on SmackDown, JBL would not be champion for that long. Yeah, but that's kind of... The, the match itself, League of Nations versus New Day, the, the, there's some talented guys in that match. So yeah, New Day. It should come off as a... It's going to be a match. Wonder what Kofi Kingston's gonna do this year because he always does something crazy. I've actually heard New Day's gonna have a unique uh, entrance to the ring or something. They're doing something kind of cool. Who does the intro to the New Day? Is Big it Biggie? Biggie? Because yeah, I thought that was the a guy that looks like a jacked up Urkel. Is yeah. Rock says Rock. Hey, Rock said penis on TV. So yeah, slowly fading away from the PG era. And I think we even said F F. He said fuck him. He said fuck a few weeks ago. Yeah. I mean, well, I guess you can swear on YouTube. <laughs> Whatever. It's just YouTube. Who cares? Yeah. We're not the WWE. This is APG. Yeah. Well, this is an old school YouTube where you have to bleep out the F words. Did yeah. you know that? Oh, I didn't know that. But that, well, When YouTube first started, you couldn't curse. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, it's nice you can now. Freedom of expression. Some people decide not to curse and they bleep the stuff out. But yeah. Okay. No, but, but getting back to New Day versus League of Nations. Does it really matter if the tag titles aren't on the line? I wish the tag titles were on the line. Like Freebird Rule. Have they ever done a five on four tag title match before? Or should no or is there always a first time for everything, I guess. There's always a first time for everything, but they've never done that before. So yeah, you pick who? New I think we both pick New Day. New Day, yeah. <laughs> Next is the second one sided fist fight. One sided fist fight. Callisto versus Ryback. How many minutes do you think this match game is going to go? I'm going to go against the, the system and I'm going to say Kalisto. 
Okay, but how many minutes do you think this match is going to go? Ten? I'm going to say five minutes, and Ryback wins. Kalisto is the new Rey Mysterio, man. True, I see that, but... He even like sounds Ryback like... Have you not heard the guy speak? Goldberg. Yeah, but Ryback looks like Goldberg, so yeah, why not? Are you saying you're into the whole Ryback? No, it? I'm not into Ryback. But he looks like Goldberg, so... I, I swear, when Ryback comes out, it, you can feel people get tired and fall asleep. I, I feel it. Like, that's how boring he is. That's every Ryback match. But, hey, remember when he was a big deal on the, doing the whole thing with Punk? That's only you that thought that. No, I, no one else ever thought that he was a big deal when that happened. Even when he had the... So, are you, are you calling me a Mark then? Yeah. Nobody wanted to see that, man. <laughs> so nobody thought he was actually a threat to Punk's title reign back in the day. No one actually thought he was going to win it, but yeah, it was boring matches. No, I... Should, should I, I, I... I don't know, I just thought... I wasn't into it, but I thought maybe they could go somewhere with it, I guess, but... Uh, Goldberg's streak. I heard it... I, I, I talked to different people. One guy says, oh, yeah! Logically, what was it, 190 and oh? Something, but that's a made-up number because they kept on putting numbers in there. No, but I t one guy I talked to said, no, that was accurate. They even counted house shows and stuff. But I thought I heard somebody of, uh, like, somebody of uh, name recognition in the wrestling industry say that that whole fucking streak is made up. Yeah, someone, uh, someone said that. Because didn't the, the numbers, like, one week he was 11 and 0, and he'd be 18 yeah, and, and 0, and all of a sudden 18 and like 25, and they're like, so many house shows that you can do. Yeah, they just pulled a number out of their ass and just said that. But the majority of the guys he did beat, I think, out of all the forgettable guys, Hugh Morris is the name that sticks out. And you think it was the first one? Yeah, and did lose against him? I think, wasn't there a, a WCW guy named Roadblockers, Matt? Yeah. Look it up, guys. WCW. It was, uh, what, during, like, B-level shows Saturday night? They had a bunch of interesting B-level characters in that day. Yeah, what was it called? WCW Saturday night? They had a bunch of them. WCW World There was actually Wide. a guy named, World yeah, Worldwide. That's the one. Edge worked that. Did you ever see that? As, uh, Sex and Hard Sex and Hard Castle? Yeah, yeah like, Roadblock. There's a guy named Roadblock who actually came out was a Roadblock thing on his <laughs> back. Ugh. Uh. And yeah, when the WWE oh, yeah. announced the Roadblock special, all I can think of is Roadblock from WCW. I remember my reaction the first time you showed me, uh, I just can't think of it. Uh, the, what was the fucking gimmick Typhoon did in W? I should know this. Came out crashing through the wall. Shockmaster? Yeah. The first like, time you showed me Shockmaster, Shockmaster, done by the voice of Oli Anderson. Yeah, oh, I f forgot about that. But. Yeah, Typhoon didn't do the voice, like... Ole Anderson in the voice. And that was a gimmick spoof of Star Wars or Flash? I don't know what the fuck it was supposed to be. They got like a Star Stormtrooper helmet, put some glitter on that shit. I, I love... There's a bunch of WWE Network shows you should see. Sting did the table for three with Vader, and they were asking him... Vader? Vader. Va should we talk about Vader new picks? Why not? <laughs> Vader, recently... <laughs> This is hilarious and disgusting at the same time. His ex-girlfriend like hacked his account and put naked pictures of Vader. Do not look for them unless you're that is desperate. I heard a seven-year-old girl saw it though. On Twitter. That's hard. That's bad. It was like going on Vader's Twitter and all of a sudden seeing naked Vader. This is Vader ball. I'm seeing a Vader ball on you. Should I describe the image? No. You saw it? No, but he's like sexy. Ah! <laughs> Is Vader doing a George Constanza pose? Uh, yeah, yeah, so we're oh kicking God, the Titanic. Okay, I gotta get the image of naked Vader out of my head. What's next? Think of the mask. <laughs> I hate you so much. Okay, Kalisto versus Ryback. Who do you think wins that? I, I'm going with Ryback. I think Kalisto. Fucking <laughs> naked Vader and <laughs> shit. <laughs> I'm not gonna get that image out of my head now. Did you remember? <laughs> The Burt Reynolds Bears. You know what? <laughs> you know what? Naked Vader. Uh, I still think you should do a YouTube hold reaction on, to on, that. Hold on. Naked Vader just thinking of that. Are you ever going to hear the same way his theme song ever again? Oh, it's time. It's time. It's Vader time. 
Vader naked talk. Oh. Oh, God. I heard he was very embarrassed about it, though. He probably yeah, apologized. Probably okay. <coughs> Next match on the card. Seven Madden ladder match for the IC title. Kevin Ziggler <coughs> versus Sami Zayn versus Ziggler. Oh, Ziggler's actually in this match. <coughs> I forgot about that. Versus Sin Cara versus Miz versus Starless and versus the guy that we're all wondering what the fuck he's doing on this match. Woo-woo-woo. Z- Zack Ryder himself. I'm going to pick Kevin Owens. Which... Neville was supposed to be in this, but he got injured, but they put Zack Ryder, but out of all people, why Zack Ryder? Why couldn't Tyler Breeze be in this shit? And there's probably other people. Because Vince doesn't like him. But Zack Ryder, god damn. Well, let's just get our picks out. I swear, we're we're, I swear we're getting punked on this. Vince is punking us. The show is going to start, and then we're going to see Zack Ryder laid out in the back by someone who beat him up, and then... The guys are coming out, and we're gonna find out who beat up Zach, and somebody comes out. Like well, Kozlov, that Survivor Series when Edge came back, right? Similar to that. It was that WrestleMania match where, like, where it's supposed to be uh, the Core versus Big Show Kane? I thought uh, that match actually happened. Kofi Kingston and no, hold on. It was supposed to be Big Show Kane, Santino, and Kozlov originally against the Core, but during Access they did an angle where Kozlov got beat up, and they put Kofi Kingston in there instead. I'm hoping that's what they do with this one for Zack Ryder, putting someone else. Because really, Zack Ryder, Dudley Boys are on the pre-show, but Zack Ryder gets to be on the main show. That's like, I think the internet blew up on that one, like when John Cena got injured. Maybe not to I'm the not same extent. really blown up. People were just confused, like, what the fuck is Zack Ryder doing in this? Just go... And if you think about it, it really is a stupid gimmick. And the, even that song New is, Jersey gimmick. Yeah, it is. Isn't that Bobby E did it better in TNA. Took towards Well, I wasn't a fan of that one either, but I like Bobby E because uh, he did it better. He's a actually a pretty talented guy, but yeah. uh that what do you think of the Zack Ryder theme song? Isn't it gone? Woo 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 I hate that so much. Have you seen the team the the bromance that him and Mojo Raleigh are doing in NXT? Who? You don't know who Mojo Rawley is. No, who's he doing what now? The the bro, they're doing a tag team based on the, the rider gimmick of uh, thirty year olds that act like teenagers, I guess. Is best so way. what they're doing? They're doing another is, TNA gimmick with Robbie E and Jesse Daughters. I guess like the bromance. It's, it's the bromance. It's the team. bromance two point Yeah, if you think about it, even the tag name sounds similar to the bromance. What's the, no, what's the name? God, what the fuck? Uh. I think it's I I, I forget now. I think it's bro if it's something. something like bro something, that'd be funny because like TNA had the exact same thing was the bro mans. It's just two guys coming out act, acting like a bunch of idiots. Yeah, like the bro mans. Yeah, yeah. So that's what they're doing. So okay, to so an extent. They, so they got something from the beautiful people. Yeah. And now they're doing the bro mans, which is kind of. Uh, now they just need to do a, an abyss like gimmick, but or they could hire abyss himself. Well, abyss got his gimmick from mankind. Well, yeah, because it is a basically a, a steroid up version of mankind. Yeah, and man, everything's copied from something, right? I'm yeah, sure for mankind was copied from Silence of the Lambs or whatever, but yeah, but yeah. So who are you picking for the the the, the I I would go as. Oh my god, that's a hard one to pick. I'm gonna say KO retains. Um. I'm gonna say Dolph Ziggler, cause he yeah. needs a win. Okay. Cause he wins something, cause like he's fighting against the F4. What if Ryder so, actually won? <laughs> then we're gonna have the whole U.S. title thing again, where he does nothing. <laughs> and gets put in a wheelchair and does nothing while <coughs> John Cena makes out his Rosa Mendez or no, it was Eve and it's Eve. and all that. Yeah. Yeah, look, that went well for Zack Ryder. He was he was nothing. In that. I think he lost the U.S. title like a week later or something. Yeah, th- that title win did nothing for him. And then we got the main event, which I'm not looking forward to. Triple H versus Roman Reigns. Oh, I think we all know who's going to win that one. Uh, of course, Roman Reigns. Cause what do you call Roman him? Reigns. The, S- the Samoan John Cena. Is it you that just says that, or is that... I think it's everyone now. Samoan... I've, I've, or people call him Samoan Superman, I don't know. Have you heard the news about how he's supposed to headline WrestleMania for the next five years or something? Yeah, I heard that. Like, yeah, WrestleMania. Is that about the run that Cena had headlining Manias? Or yep. Like, Indeed. What, 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 what number did we get 16 Cena in the main event? Was that 23 or... 
Like, when did we all say enough is enough? Well, when he won the WWE title and made it a spinner belt, that's when we got pissed off at him. Because we had no problem with him up until he made the spinner belt, and that's when it went downhill. You know who you should blame the spinner belt idea on? 50 I Cent? Mean, no, no. 50 Cent. Is that who you got it from? I thought Conan. But no one cared about the United States title, but it was a cool spinner belt for the United States title. But it's kind of funny that technically the spinner belt is a, a custom Cena design belt that, that became the universal recognized title for like eight years or Yeah. Like, because like, yeah, the U.S. title becoming a spinner belt, it was, it was cool and all because it was a U.S. title. But doing that to the main title, god damn, that was stupid. How come when he won the world title, he never made that a spinner belt? Did you ever think about that? Was, was there a spinner belt at that time? There was a spinner WWE title at the time, so... But did it spin, or was it at the point where it stopped spinning? I thought they made it stop spinning after a while or something. Because there was a point where it stopped spinning. I, I love when Punk was champion, me doing interviews, he's like, I feel like I'm carrying a belt that they sell at Toys R Us or something. Exactly. Yeah.